Good afternoon, Keith Tebow with you today. FRC Media, we're in the midst of providing coverage of the state 2022 election here in Massachusetts. We're hoping to speak with as many candidates as possible between now and Election Day. The state primary is September 6th, and joining me today is one of the candidates seeking the Republican nomination for Lieutenant Governor, former State Representative Kate Campanelli. She will uh, go up against Lisa Cole Allen in the primary in September. Uh, Kate, uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope all is well. Okay, Keith, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be on, and for all your viewers in Fall River, I'm glad to be here with you. So thank you very much for the opportunity. You're welcome. Glad to share your thoughts with the voters. You know, um, a lot of people may not know some of the statewide candidates unless those statewide candidates are from their community. So let me ask you off the bat, tell us about Kate Campanelli and why you want to be the next lieutenant governor. Oh, well, well, thank you. Yeah. So Kate Campanelli, I live in Spencer, so I'm just west of Worcester, two towns over. And so coming to you from Western Central Mass today. And my background, I'm coming to this ticket with uh, over 12 years of experience in public service and legislative uh, affairs. I, I grew up here in Massachusetts, in Leicester, Massachusetts. And after college, I went to Sweetbriar College down in Virginia, getting a business management degree, but moved up to DC and was a legislative staffer there for a few years, moved back home and got involved in local politics and uh, worked my way onto to Beacon Hill as a legislative aide and then running myself for state representative in 2014, where I represented my hometown of Leicester and the city of Worcester. So I really enjoyed my time in the legislature. I was on the Committee for Ways and Means and Healthcare Financing. You just learn so much about community involvement, constituent services, and, and how the government can really help everyday people. So um, how I got into this race, it was actually, it may come to a surprise to, to you, to all of you viewers, when Charlie and Karen announced that they weren't running for a third term, we all kind of expected it. And at that time when they weren't running, I was looking at who our candidates were to replace them. And they just didn't seem to align with the real issues of Massachusetts. And so when Chris Doty threw his hat into the ring, I had the opportunity to meet him a few weeks after his announcement and saw that he was the, the man to take over the state, you know, has that executive level experience to come in, manage a state as a business and, and really um, transition the state forward. So really proud to join his ticket and we really complement each other. So we're running uh, informally now as a team, but hopefully after the primary we'll be an official team. Yeah, you mentioned that how you've teamed up with Chris Doty, who's running for mm -hmm. governor on the Republican side as well. You know, years ago, we wouldn't see this. Um, it was normally the, the governor would have its race. Uh, the lieutenant governor has its race. As you said, there's no, there's no team in the primary. You will be paired together uh, if you're successful with the Republican nominee for governor on the a final election ballot. It's funny, this appears to be a, a new phenomenon. Um, do you think it, it bodes well for you compared to, you know, what would be the other ticket, if you will, of Ms. Allen and uh, Jeff Deal? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, it, it it's funny because you see different situations, different sides, even the Democrats don't team up until after the primary. But I think it works really well, especially for Chris and I. Again, we're having uh, my experience in the legislature, having that background and Chris's background running a corporation and, and that executive level experience. We just complement each other each other so well. We have a great working relationship. So I think showing that we're a strong team together now, it, it, it bodes well for us. Absolutely. And looking back, uh, when Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito ran, they sort of ran as a team, definitely in their second um, uh, election, their re-election uh, four, four years ago. Um, looking, you know, at the the political landscape of the Republican Party, um, obviously, uh, Mr. Deal and Ms. Allen is getting the support from former President Trump. That ticket's getting that that MAGA vote, if if you will. Um, how do you differentiate between that? And if successful, how do you try to bring that constituency of the Republican Party in with you heading into November? 
Right. Oh, what a great question. Because Chris and I, that's what we're looking forward to do. You know, we're looking to unite everyone. You know, we see everyone from all over the state where we're talking to people. Everyone is so, so concerned about the divisiveness, no matter what side you're on. So Chris and I are, are focused on, on the middle in Massachusetts, getting the job done. We're, we're looking for solutions and how to solve problems, not getting into the party politics. So if elected, I think we can bring that, show that we can be successful and that we can be a big tent party and be accepting of, of all views and ideas. And I think that's important in, in every case, not just a, a, a political party, but as a governor and lieutenant governor. You also hope to send that message out if you're successful, if Chris and, and you are successful in September to, you know, Democrats and specifically independents and, and unenrolled uh, to kind of coalesce that that uh, that base in a way similar to what has happened with Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito. Yes, absolutely. You know, our message is quality of life issues. It's about getting back to the basics. It's about affordability, good schools for our kids, making sure we have healthy communities that are feel supported have the local aid coming back to them instead of keeping it at the state house making sure we have public good public safety in place these are the issues that people care about every day and these are the issues that people are voting for it's not the the party politics and we want someone that can get things done and will work to get those problems solved and that's what chris and i are proposing and uh, to that point, uh, over the last eight years, um, speaking with our local legislative delegation here in Fall River, all Democrats, uh, they gave the governor and lieutenant governor a high praise for their work in the region, working collegially with the state legislature. Um, two questions. One, do you hope to continue that? And two, how difficult will it be to fill the shoes of Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito? Oh, they'll be, they'll be big shoes to fill for sure. Um, but, you know, as a state representative, I represented Worcester, again, a, a, a very a democratic town, city, excuse me. And I had to work with my leg my democratic colleagues across the aisle and on the local level and on the state level to get things done for our community. And that's what it was about. It was about getting those, working together to get those projects and priorities for our district done. So I, I have the track record of being able to work on both sides of the aisle. And that's something that we want to continue. You know, when we're, Chris and I are going around the state talking to people and, and municipalities, it's about keeping that transition smooth between administrations. And one thing that Karen and Charlie, I think we all see it, what they did really well was keeping those relationships with municipalities, making sure, knowing that each municipality and region of the state was different, but being able to help them prioritize their issues and be that, that voice and connection, that relationship with them on Beacon Hill so they could get what they needed. And we definitely wanna continue that, that tradition, if you will. Yeah. I mean, um, that was going to be my next question. You know, um, the role of lieutenant governor traditionally has been one of uh, obviously running the governor's council uh, mm -hmm. meetings uh, every week or every other week or whenever they're held. Um, but, you know, there really wasn't much of a role for the lieutenant governor. And that's changed over the years. Um, even Governor Patrick and um, um, his lieutenant governor, um, Tim Murray, you know, had that, mm -hmm. that sort of relationship. You know, you could even go back further to, you know, Paul Salucci. Um, and Jane Swift and even, you know, Governor Weld and Governor Salucci yeah. seems to have, have involved. Mm -hmm. So how do you hope to take it another step further than what's been happening with Lieutenant Governor Polito in this case? Hey, sure. Yeah. So definitely, again, keeping that relationship with our municipalities is number one. I think that that's very important and a vital job that has kind of come out of being a, a lieutenant governor. So that's one that I look forward to and one that, again, we're prioritizing. Uh, another one is, again, tourism, maybe tasking me with tourism, education. After I left the legislature in 2018, I was a teacher in our public school. So education is very important to me. So it's, it's keeping that, those municipal relationships, those legislative relationships, and, and making sure that these communities have a voice all across the state. Yeah. Anything in particular when it comes to gateway cities like Fall River that you'd like to address, um, 
you know, uh, gateway cities have their own identities in many ways. You know, the suburbs around Fall River are even a little different than the city itself. So how would you approach, you know, dealing with the, the gateway cities, which are obviously smaller than the Bostons and Worcesters and Springfields, but have specific needs that, you know, being a city? Sure. You know, uh, again, my experience in the legislature, I, I represented my hometown of Leicester, which would be considered right. more of a, a suburban town in the city of Worcester. So which is, as you mentioned, the gateway city. So you have these two cities, towns, municipalities with different demographics and different needs. So when I look at the South Coast and, and we're talking about Fall River, um, Specifically, you know, it's needs like housing, affordable housing, making sure there are good, meaningful jobs. Affordability is a huge issue. And, you know, I know Fall River has had some, um, have had some difficulties with, with opioid epidemics. So it's looking at each region differently and knowing that they have different needs. So I think overall it's providing good jobs making sure we have affordability in Massachusetts. This is These are themes that no matter what city or town you're in, people are talking about and people want solutions for. So that's what we're focused on. All right, I want to get into some other, maybe a little more specific uh, issues. Um, you know, Governor Baker this year proposed $700 million in tax cuts. It looks like as we're speaking today in uh, late July, if you're watching this in August and the legislature is done with their business, that the legislature is going to come up with some sort of uh, tax cuts as well. May not be all of what the governor is proposing. Are you hoping to take tax cuts further if there is, you know, the, the, the revenue increases that the state has been seeing over the past few years? Sure. You know, seeing seeing the surplus in the legislature uh, and, and having it come back to to the citizens is, is always a good thing. I I a uh, fan of Governor Baker's entire tax relief package. So if all of that isn't passed, which is is likely to happen, I think Chris and I are are both eager to to look at, back and try to make sure that those tax cuts that didn't get into the package this year would be revisited in the next uh, in the next term, which the budget will be put out uh, start. Well, that budget work starts in November. But also, you know, looking at, at, at different commissions, in particular, the tax revenue review commission here in Massachusetts, that looks for ways to tax individuals in Massachusetts, I think we need to to redevelop that and refocus that to how can we how can we eliminate some taxes and, and how are these being used and which ones are efficient and so i think there are different ways that we can be creative in tax cuts here in massachusetts you know um over the past uh, month the supreme court has ruled on two big issues mm -hmm. where massachusetts has really solid laws in terms of the right to an abortion and also mm -hmm. Uh, gun legislation. Um, are you looking to make changes to that, especially since, you know, the abortion issue has now been shifted back to the states? Mm -hmm. Or is that, um, to use a, a court term, a, a precedent that has been set here in the Commonwealth? Sure. Well, you know, as you mentioned, so the, the new SCOTUS um, ruling with Roe v. Wade, it, it brought the decision back to the back to the states, back to the state legislature. We have to remember this is a legislative function. So what it does is gives the voice back to the people here in Massachusetts. And they have that voice through their state representative, through their state senator. So if so that voice was voted on um, with the Roe Act most recently, again, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, they solidified uh, abortion being legal and codified into law here in Massachusetts. So that's not something that Chris and I are looking to, to change. Uh, again, it's codified into law and that's a legislative function, not, a, not an executive function. Yeah. What about in terms of uh, any further gun legislation which may come down? Uh, the Supreme Court you know, overturned mm -hmm. a New York law in terms of concealed carry. Are you hoping to, to change some things here with that? Mm -hmm. You know, I, again, that, that SCOTUS ruling, what it did was created uniformity in Massachusetts, right, where the police chief was objective into their ability to give some grant someone a, a license to carry. Now it makes it um, 
subjective. So they they that rule is a little um, I don't see it having a big effect here in Massachusetts. But what I do see, and we're not looking to to change any legislation on guns here in Massachusetts. In fact, I think we may have too many. But what I do believe in is red flag laws or the see something, say something. But what I really want to press upon everyone is to the do something part. See something, say something, do something. I don't think we're doing doing enough when we see something. You know, one common thread we see with a lot of these um, unfortunate mass shootings or, or acts of violence is that there were multiple warning signs ahead of time. Maybe not, not one, not two, but multiple. So what are, where's the disconnect there? What, where, what are we missing between the see something, say something, and the actual doing something to prevent this from happening? Yeah. Um, you know, shifting gears to, um, to education, um, a lot of local school districts like Fall River has seen a boost in its uh, revenue and funding from the state due to the Student Opportunity Act, which I'm sure you may have been involved with when you were in the legislature, were you? Yeah, I may have been. <laughs> yeah. But, but anyway, I guess my, 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 yeah, my general question is, you know, funding for schools, um, mm -hmm. is it enough? Is it something that as governor or lieutenant governor, in proposing budgets you'd want to take a look at and and not only K through 12 schools but also public higher education. Oh, sure. You know, education is is um is something that I I'm very keen to uh, again being a, a public school teacher for the past 3 years and even teaching through through the pandemic. So I, I'm seeing what's going on in our public schools, and I would like to see an increase in funding, but also what needs to be looked at is the priorities. You know, we're seeing such teacher burnout right now, and, you know, the, the, it's being very difficult to hire teachers, to hire staff, especially in places like Fall River where you may need bilingual teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's very difficult. So I think what we need to do is, is look at how teachers are feeling in the classroom. Is their administration being um, it being resourceful and helpful to them and making sure that these regional school districts, you know, the administration is being accountable. And that starts at the top. It starts with the secretary of education that's appointed by the governor. The department of secondary and elementary education, as well as, as you said, um, higher education as well, those commissioners, making sure that our local community colleges, our local schools are being accountable to these commissions where they get their guidance. So I think there's a lot we can do, a lot we can review uh, once we get into office. Yeah. Do you feel in terms of healthcare in Massachusetts, our current uh, healthcare structure is something that should be maintained? Do you feel that there could be some tweaks that may be needed? I absolutely need some tweaks. Um, healthcare is very, very complex. I think what we can do on the legislative um, and what we can do on the executive side versus the legislative side, we're going to have to look at. But um, I, I do think we need some major changes into our into our healthcare system here in Massachusetts. And Chris and I are looking into that right now. And we are we are out. We're talking, and we'll hopefully be out with a, a plan soon to talk about some more details. You had mentioned at the beginning that your goal is to work with everyday people across mm -hmm. the, the aisle of, mm -hmm. if you will, Democrats, Republicans, those who are unenrolled to meet their needs, because it's it's about the welfare of everyone in this state to that will make Massachusetts successful. So let me ask you, in terms of dealing with the countries dealing with now in terms of inflation, would you mm -hmm. have said, um, you know, uh, suspending the gas tax maybe to help? And if, are there any other issues that you would see? That could have been done because maybe by the time you're in, we may not be in, in, in this inflationary period. So what would you have done in terms of dealing with inflation? Sure. You know, it, it's hard. We can't really help inflation, but we can help affordability in Massachusetts. Right. And, and like you said, I would love to see uh, a gas tax relief. Um, Chris and I were one of the first to propose that back uh, in, in early, I believe, March. I, and also, again, going back to, to Charlie Baker's tax relief package, I think that can, those are things that can help people immediately. And we're looking for some, uh, there are some things that we can do immediately for, to our constituents for immediate relief and some things that will be a little more long term. One of those would be 
um, energy. You know, our high cost of energy right now is is really hurting our our citizens, hurting our businesses, and we have the third highest in the country. So I think things like we have to revisit what our energy plan is here in Massachusetts and be in all of the above. And right now it's kind of a self-inflicted problem here in Massachusetts, but I think opening the natural gas pipelines would be another immediate effect that we could feel here in Massachusetts when people are worried about uh, getting into the winter and how they're going to heat their house. It, it's, it's very terrifying, especially for those on a, on a fixed income. Yeah. Um, you know, in mentioning your partnership with Chris Doty uh, for the Republican uh, nomination uh, for governor and lieutenant governor, um, you mentioned that, you know, your philosophies meld well together. And I just want to ask this, this is one of my final questions. Um, if you were to be successful, but Jeff Deal were to be successful on in the governor's race, um, you've got to work together to get elected because you will be a ticket uh, in the state election, how do you uh, have you? I'm sure you've thought about it. How how would you uh, work with with Jeff to get elected? You know, I, I think it will come down to uh, again working together. I'm certainly um, willing to work, uh, as you said, uh, with anybody. And but when we look at the the history, we're kind of branding ourselves. Chris and I are branding ourselves as a team. Uh, Jeff is branding himself as a team with with Leah Allen and. Uh, if, if we use a convention as an example, many people knew it was a team and there was very, very little crossover. So I, I, it could happen, but I don't think it, it's um, quite something to worry about right now. Right. Well, let me give you the last word in another minute or so. If you speak to the, to the residents of Fall River, or, uh, the Republicans in Fall River. Um, on uh, why they should vote for you for lieutenant governor on September 6th. Well, Keith, thank you so much again for having me and to all your viewers. Um, September 6th is coming so quickly and um, we are we are very excited, Chris and I, to, to look at Massachusetts to fix the problems that, that we're all concerned about. Again, affordability, good schools for our kids, making sure your communities are safe. And we are, we are looking to work with anybody and and getting those things done. You can visit our websites. I'm kate4lg.com and chris4ma.com to get more of our platform, more of our issues. And we look forward to, to being in your area, to meeting you and to serving you um, come November. All right, Kate Campanelli, the Lieutenant Governor candidate on the Republican side, one of two. Thank you for joining me, and uh, we hope to speak again. How about mm -hmm. that? Between uh, the Absolutely. September primary and the November election, I hope to get I look together. Forward to it. Thank All you. Right. Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. And thank you for joining us here on FRC Media. I'm Keith Sebo. Make sure to vote on September 6th.